All right, so we're going to continue with more videos for Math 2580, Calc 4. And we're going to start this one out with just some examples doing partial derivatives, and then we're going to introduce some terminology. Okay, so here are a few functions we might look at. Um, so this one's a function of three variables, but it's, it's a relatively tame function. In fact, it'll be polynomial. Right. Um, in more than one variable, polynomials can involve products of powers of all of your variables. So this is a, well, it's a, actually a monomial, right? It's a, it's a polynomial with one term. Um, so we can do that as an example. And let me do one two-variable example that I think is um, an instructive one to keep around. Cube root of let's say x, y squared. Um, there's, uh, well, I don't want to say there's a right and a wrong way to do this one here, but there's at least an easy way and a hard way. Um, okay, so let's compute first partial derivatives for these functions. Now, uh, remember that uh, the rule for doing partial derivatives, right, the definition, so the definition is given, you know, as the limit of a, of a difference quotient, just like it is in, in one variable. Uh, but, um, you know, we only, the h that goes to zero only applies to one variable at a time. And so what that really means is you're holding two of the th variables constant, in the case of the th three variable function, um, while varying one. So you're always varying one variable and you're holding the other ones constant when you do a partial derivative. Um, so if I wanted to do the partial derivative with respect to x, it's actually quite simple. Uh, I treat y and z as constants, so this is just x to the 4 times a constant, and then you use just the constant in the power rule from calc 1. So we say, okay, so you have, you do the derivative of the power, and then you multiply by the constant. So you have 4x cubed, and the other stuff is just a constant, so you multiply by it, right? Or at least it's effectively a constant as far as the partial derivative is concerned, all right? If I wanted to do the y derivative, again, I'm, uh, I'm treating x and z as constants, so I'm just taking the derivative of y squared. We know that the derivative of y squared is 2y, and you know it's usually nice to put the coefficient out front, so x to the 4 stays put. y squared becomes y, right? 2 times y times z cubed, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll leave the z derivative for you, but I bet you can figure it out, right? You just treat x and y as constants. You take the derivative of z cubed using the power rule. Um, so this is not so bad. And in fact, pretty much every, every partial derivative problem that we can throw at you is going to involve kind of the derivative rules that you know and love from Calc 1, right? Um, you got to remember how to deal with trig functions and exponentials and logarithms and things like that. Um, and, and you can apply, you know, the, the single variable chain rule is still in effect. We'll talk about the general chain rule um, soon in a later video. Uh, so if I wanted to do, let's say, this second one, well, okay, so I have x, y squared. So I have sort of a, you know, sort of a monomial like I had in the first one, except it's under a square root. Uh, so how do you deal with that? Well, Let's say, I want, let's say I wanted to do the derivative of f with respect to x, and you know, remember there's this other notation that you could use, df dx with these curly d's at x, y. Um, so if we think of this as you know, x, y squared to the one-third, well, there's this power function on the outside. So chain rule says deal with the power function first. So one-third x, y squared to the minus two-thirds. And then I have to multiply by the partial derivative of what's inside. So that's x, y squared. And so this gets me to one-third x, y squared to the minus two-thirds times, so the derivative of x is just 1, so I have 1 times y squared, so I multiply by y squared, right? 
Uh, and, and similarly, I could do the, the partial derivative with respect to y, um, and I could do it this, this same way, right? So the only thing that would change if I was doing the y derivative, in fact, let's just um, kind of superimpose that. I don't know if I, was, uh, if I was doing y instead of x. This part would look the same. The only thing that would change would be, well, that's now a y derivative here when I take the derivative of the inside. And so instead of having a y squared here, I would have 2xy, because the derivative of y is 2x, partial derivative, right? With respect to, sorry, derivative of y squared is 2y times x, um, right? But actually, there's, um, there's an easier way to do this one. And this is something you want to keep your eye on, right? Um, just like in, in one variable, before you go and blindly kind of crank out your derivatives using all the rules that you've learned, right? And the same thing with integration. Sometimes it's in your best interest to see if you can simplify first. Um, so here we could say, oh, look, you know, you, you have a, a law of exponents that says you can apply the exponent to each term on the inside. So I can write this as x to the one third. And then y squared to the one third, well, I multiply the powers. So it's x to the one third times y to the two thirds, right? And if I write it like that, then these partial derivatives are a hell of a lot easier because, you know, the, the x derivative is just going to, well, you just do power rule on the x, one third x to the minus two thirds times y to the two thirds. And when I want the y derivative, Well, I apply power rule to the second term, and I get 2 thirds x to the 1 third. 2 thirds minus 1 gives me y to the minus 1 third, right? And that's a lot easier. Uh, there's no, no chain rule or anything like that to deal with. Of course, sometimes you'll have no choice. You'll have to use chain rule, right? If it was a, if it was a cosine function, let's say, on the outside, then yeah, what are you going to do? You have no choice. You've got to do chain rule. Um, so there's, there's not much you can do about that. OK, um, so that, that's the basic idea for partial derivatives. We're going to do more of these in, in class. I don't want to clog up the entire thing with examples. Um, actually, we might pause this here, and, and then I'll add some more content on the same board in the next video, because I see that we're already at about uh, seven and a half minutes. Um, so think on these examples. We're going to stop here, and we'll start another video where I'm going to, I'm going to introduce some related terminology, and, and maybe we'll talk about second-order derivatives as well.